Have you had trouble researching complex topics with ChatGPT because you can't feed it enough information? In this video, I use custom prompt instructions to allow research on a variety of documents while maintaining short-term memory within the ChatGPT bot. A couple of weeks ago, a product called Open Interpreter started gaining popularity and I realized I needed to figure out what was going on with this particular project, do a little bit of research. I also wanted to create a video and I noticed that there were a lot of people starting to talk about this product and I wanted to listen to the videos but also put the transcripts through ChatGPT. And a combination of those transcripts and the documentation from the project itself was something that I need to do research on. There are a few different ways to research complex documents in ChatGPT, but the one I'm going to work with today is custom instructions. And at the moment, I've just started with this simple little idea to outline what I'd like to achieve. What we'll do is start with a GPT for blank slate, and we go down to our settings where we can put in custom instructions. And I'll just paste the outline that I did. This is not exactly what I want to say. In fact, I don't know the exact prompt at the beginning of this session because I'm going to work through it as I develop and do my research on the particular video. The main things I know I need this custom instruction to do each time is it needs to understand the topic that we're working with and maintain it. It needs to comprehend new information coming in and feed it into a simple information structure that it has a long-term memory as I do my research. I don't want it to waste energy trying to tell me information I don't care about. I'll ask the questions. It should just give me simple re replies. I will need it to work with specific commands. I believe I'll need to add documents I might need to break documents apart and feed them in because they're too big. Sometimes I'll want to get information of the current state of the second brain, the second brain being the information that it's maintaining for me. I'll move forward and start writing a custom instruction and we'll see how it works. When we look at this first statement, I realize that the starting point is to let it know that it's my research assistant. When we, look, when we look at you will need to be reading and comprehending my documents, I think the prompt we can put in here would be something like, you will maintain a document, outline and summarize the information you have collected. The next step would be to do a document title, but I really want to get into commands right now while they're still in my head. The thing about maintaining a summary of information is that ChatGPT doesn't always maintain the right information. And I believe I'm going to need some commands that I can use to tell it what's really important, what's just generally important, and what is not of use to me right now. Basically a command to ignore certain pieces of information. So let's go and think about the commands we might need. The first command I've added here is just called add. I guess I would like to type add colon and then just paste in a transcript and have that transcript added into the document. I've put in this add followed by add provided information to the document. Now I suspect that when I add information to the document it might get things a little bit wrong and I think what we could try is a command called drop and that will be, if I give it some extra information, it just drops that from the main document. As the document develops, I'm sure there's going to be like a list or an outline. So we'll add a new command called TOC for table of contents. And essentially, I just want to get the table of contents based on the document that it's maintaining. This table of contents will help me understand things, but There'll be times when I need the detail as well. We'll add a command called detail that just shows the entire document. I suspect that from time to time, I'm going to want it to just give me its opinion on certain concepts. 
When it does that, I don't want the information added to the document. I do want to be able to evaluate that information. I also don't want it to write an essay. So I'm believing something like 50 words might be good. And from time to time, I need to change that as well. We'll create a command called Q50. What it will do is I give it a question. It'll give me a 50 word answer. It won't add it to the document. And I'll also let it know that it can accept other numbers. I might do Q30 for 30 words or Q100 for 100 words. We need to maintain a title. We haven't dealt with that yet. Maintain and update the document on research. We've got that covered. Provide simple replies. I'm going to have to write a prompt for that soon and respond to specific commands. We've got most of them in place. I'll just add one other. We'll put in the title command. This I would start the research with, so we have a title. One of the things that I think will happen as I research information is I might want to update the title based on new information coming in. This command should be able to create or update a title on the fly. It means we can finally just delete these pieces of information and let's figure out how we'll write this prompt. Deal with how GPT responds to each of our commands. There is a section called how would you like GPT to respond, which we can fill in. Essentially, I want to take the add and the drop command and make sure it just says yay. I do not need any other information other than an acknowledgement that it's added or removed it from the document. When it comes to the table of contents or the details, it's going to have to give me the information I want, but I don't want any other additional information. Lastly, with the question, it can write whatever it likes, so long as it's 50 words or 30 words. Prompt that I'm going to put in here looks like this. Do not give any additional information. For simple commands like add and drop, say yay. For table of contents, write that. For details, write that. And for question, you will give me an a answer to the question in that number of words. I do know that ChatGPT will sometimes still give other common phrases around the document, and I may need to come in here and tell it not to do that. But for now, this is where we're going to start. I want to find out whether it understands what its role is. What is your role? Press enter, see what it comes up with. My role is to be your research assistant. I will maintain a document outline and a summary of information I have collected. I will respond to specific commands such as add, drop, top, detail, Q50 and title as per your instructions. This is looking good so far. Let's put in a title. We'll head on over to the website, copy the term open interpreter and just paste it in. So J, perfect. Now the documentation around this tool is that it's a code interpreter to run locally on your computer. There's a whole lot of information in a readme file. If I open up that readme file in raw format, there'll be a bunch of information. It would be nice to strip out the HTML, but essentially I should just be able to take a bunch of this raw information, but not too much because ChatGPT can only take a certain amount of information. Head over to ChatGPT, we'll give our add command and we'll just paste this information in. We've got a response of yay, which is perfect. I think it might be time for a table of contents. We have a partial information. I haven't read through the documentation, but this seems to be about right. Let's head back to the readme file and we'll grab another chunk of information. Not too much. We'll get to about here, I think. Head back to GPT. We'll put in add and paste that new information. Type talk. There's definitely more information coming through. Just adding a final little bit of information that I missed at the bottom. Just a little bit of coding information. At this point, I'd like to see what detail I can get out of the document. I don't know that I'd get all the information from the readme file because there's too much information in the form of tokens. But since this has been summarizing and keeping detailed information, we'll just type in detail, see what we get. And it's starting to write out a couple of commands. It's going to show us how to use it. 
access to the demo. We've got a quick start guide and commands. This is all looking pretty good and I could probably use it just as it is as a question and answer bot to install and start using this particular project. But in the next step, what I'd like to do is watch a couple of the videos by some of the other people on YouTube and see how they're working with Open Interpreter. My research bot is currently loaded up with the documentation from Code Interpreter, but what I'd like to do now is take some videos from YouTube, grab their transcriptions and load them into my research as well. And the way I've done that is I've used the add command that we already had access to, and I've added these transcription summaries. So we have one here, another one here, and they just keep going. I keep adding transcription summaries into the research. But you might be wondering, how did I get a transcription summary? And the way I did that was by running YouTube transcriptions through my transcription summarizer bot. To do the transcription summaries, I actually had to have videos in which to transcribe. So right here, I have a video called Open Interpreter, open source version of ChatGPT. It's a 13 minute video. And if I move through the different videos that I researched, I had all these different people in the last two weeks who have been doing detailed videos on Open Interpreter. You can grab a transcript and copy it into a text file and I did it for each individual video that I came across so that I could use it within the YouTube transcription bot. From the point of view of the research bot in which I've added all these different summarizations, we then need to move over to one of the YouTube transcription bots. Here's one on Open Interpreter. We've got a a summary here and at the bottom I can copy it, move it to the original bot. And I just repeat that for each of the YouTube transcriptions that I want to do. I grab the information I want. But you might be wondering where is the YouTube transcription bot? Let's head over to a new ChatGPT window and I'm just going to paste in this little prompt here called what role and instructions have I assigned to you? Now this is a YouTube transcription bot. I preloaded it. You have assigned me the role of YouTube transcription assistant. I can read through transcriptions and build a detailed document, which is the goal that I needed for the research bot. It's got similar sorts of commands like add, drop, stories. I can ask questions. It hasn't listed a particular command called titles. I can generate a bunch of YouTube titles based off the transcript. This is basically how I make bots work with one another, just using various custom instructions. If you want to understand how I built this particular custom instruction, I'll put a link in the description. Now we're back at our original research bot and I'm just going to put in a quick prompt. What is your role and command? So I just want to remember what I've got available here. It's to be a research assistant. We can add, drop, and get table of contents. We should do a detail and see what all the different information that we've added to the bot has done for us. From this detail command, we've got a fairly extensive master document that's been created. We've got this limitations for big data, Git repository cloning, community engagement. If we move through, there's additional documents that have been summarized and added into the main document. Open interpreter YouTube video analysis. We've got information here. If we keep going down, we've got another one. One of the things that I notice is a lot of the commands from the original instruction guide from GitHub are missing but we may still be able to get them out. Let's see if we can get the setup instructions for Open Interpreter. And I could do a Q50. I might even just be able to get away with a regular prompt, but I'm going to try this one first. It was one of the commands I set up. Can you give me a setup guide to create my own Open Interpreter? The great thing about that is it's just given me the 50 word summary. Let's do the same prompt again without the command. This looks like it's given us a more detailed list of instructions that we can run from the terminal to set up Open Interpreter.
Now I don't tend to do too many more commands from the research, but generally once I've done my research, I'll take that information over to other bots, but it doesn't stop us from doing standard prompts. What we'll try here is, can you create an engaging YouTube script based on the detailed document? Now, normally I would take that to the YouTube script and title bot, but let's see what it comes up with. Here we have a YouTube script. Let's look at this intro, B-roll with upbeat music, sounds about right. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are passionate about AI, coding and game changing technology, then smash the like button and hit subscribe. Today we're diving deep into something that's been buzzing on social media, Open Interpreter. Gary Marcus himself tweeted about it, so you know it's a big deal. I know that statement did actually come out of one of the transcriptions that I watched. Is this the way I would write a script? No, and that's why I would have a YouTube script writing set of prompts designed and feed the information into them instead so that I can get the style. But the good thing is this is a pretty good script just of its own accord. This has been a deep dive into the researcher bot, a custom instruction prompt that you can use for research and development. It's also part of a set of advanced prompts that I've been developing, and they're part of a podcast that I'm putting together. You should be able to find information in the next video.